TV show set in Gotham City without Batman in it? Oh. Yeah. How did they come back? Um, lots of different strands all came together. Basically, um, I don't... I work with Warner Brothers that work with DC. They wanted me to do something. I can't do superheroes, I don't really understand them. I don't, superpowers, I don't get it as a drama thing. It's like magic, like I don't get Gandalf. Like, why isn't he just fiction? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, then, um, then it became, all right, how, how do you tell a story? Gotham, to me, was the central character. It, 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 it's, for me, it's New York in the 70s. Um, it's scary and sexy, it's, it's dark but glamorous. Um, uh, it's the place your dad runs off to with another woman, it's the place where you get, you know, you get mugged, you, get, you, you lose your virginity, uh, you know, the first big party, that sort of thing, the streets, are, all of that fed into it. And then, all right, if, how do you tell a story about that without getting into costumes? If Gordon was the was the detective, the rookie detective to investigate the Wayne murders, that's an excellent starting point that everyone would understand and go, oh yeah, I get it. That puts two kind of elements together very early on. And then you get to tell Bruce Wayne as a teenager, which must be fascinating. Um, and you get to tell Penguin as a young man, Joker as a young man, Poison Ivy as a little girl, Catwoman as a little girl. Um, and I, that's that's a great idea. It's an idea I then realised has been kind of variations on it have been thought of many, many times. And that's sort of the beautiful thing about this world is it is genuine popular mythology. You can't come up with a, an original idea in the Batman universe that someone hasn't already done, which means that you, the pressure is off. It's both a world that everyone understands and has expectations about, but you can also play with it and, and uh, create new myth um, without betraying the old myth. So you can tell history without lying. You know? Normally you're warping something or bending the truth here. Everyone owns the truth and so you, it's a it's a beautiful place to write. Which character do you think is gonna be is gonna surprise everyone? I think um, surprise in terms of wow, uh, Robin Lord Taylor's penguin. Uh, but, you know, Penguin is the first, is the first sort of supervillain, arch-villain that you see in the show, and he brings it so strong um, as if he was born to play that part, and he attacks it with such uh, elegance and venom. Uh, people would be, I don't know, surprised, but he really knocks it out of the park. It's great to watch. You mentioned the 70s. Is this set in a specific time period? Is it set back in the 70s or is it non specific? No, I mean, the other beautiful thing about the DC universe is it's always yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> um, it, it's a timeless universe. But if Batman is today, or if, say the, you know, the last Batman is tomorrow, then this world, it's the past, but it's everybody's past. So it's the, the past of your 18. Like, people younger than me don't remember when you didn't have cell phones. Um, the computers, it's hard for me to remember. So the cell phones, but the cars are 1960s, the buildings are 1930s. So that it's sort of a dream world when you dream of the past. If you don't go in 1986, you dream, you know, your mother's there and she's 25, and that, but there's someone who couldn't possibly have been there until 20 years later. So you get a sort of mashup of different periods, which is great fun to shoot, and it's great fun to art direct. And it also allows you to, anything that works, you can use, because you don't have to say, well, they didn't have, you know, computers or, or death rays. If we want to put in a death ray, we'll put in a death ray. <laughs> Is that mean, a, not for a while. Well, some of the uh, younger characters you mentioned, Bruce Wayne, Catwoman, Gordon Ivy, during the course of the, of the series, will we see them at different ages? I know they're young now, but... The, the intention now is to is to sort of age naturally, uh, as as David and um, Cameron go. Well, that's what we'll see. So it'll be they'll grow up year by year. Um, there is no intention at this stage to leap forward, um, just because uh, the only reason that would happen is if there's some way you know, people weren't happy with the way the story is developing as it is. To me, the beauty of it is that we get to see. 
the real psychological progression. And, and we're, we're not playing um, these kids. Well, obviously we're playing them as kids, but it's an adult show or with adult themes. It's about someone who's lost his parents. Um, and we play that for the reality of that, which is dark and tragic and horrible. Um, and that's why it's so great to have a, we needed a, a genuinely great actor to play Bruce Wayne. And David is a genuinely great actor because he's a kid playing with adult themes. It's not a kid in a kid's show. It's a kid in a show about what happens when adult shit happens to a small kid. A Batman must have been crazy at some level. And it's a very dysfunctional, odd thing to want to do. Um, so you can't play him as, as some kind of, uh, you know, it's not Adam West as a young man. Uh, it, it's, it's someone much darker and, and, uh, and more troubled. You obviously the king of the rogues gallery in Gotham uh, is the Joker. Can you talk about how you were thinking about approaching him? Yeah, he is the king of the rogues gallery, the crown jewel, um, and similarly with you know, how we'll, we're going to wait and get the show up and running and, and get it right, tonally right and sort of story-wise right, and then we'll start thinking about how to bring him in. Um, we will certainly try and surprise people and maybe even trick people with because that obviously one of those expectations that we understand everyone will be waiting for so you can't just present the guy you know with a big smile and start telling that story um, because you know, it's not that that would be dull it would be fascinating but that's one of those opportunities to really start playing with it. If so there will be two or three, probably there will be two or three people who think, oh, that might be him, or that might be him. And it will be the one you don't expect. <laughs> you mentioned the psychological element. So I've heard, you know, you said noir, and there's action, and there's crime. Do you see it as being also heavily, like, psych psychology is going to play a part in seeing how these villains, especially, develop into what they're going to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because to me, that's exactly... The beauty of the Batman universe is that no one was bitten by a radioactive spider or, or some people fell into radioactive goop, goop. But really their, their villainy stems from very specific pathologies and histories. Um, and everyone's, you know, nobody does anything that is not psychological. Um, that's the definition of it. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's much more about, or rather the seed of all the action is is psychology. And then, of course, we're in a, we're in a slightly larger than life universe. Um, for instance, in the, in the third episode, you know, uh, one of the guys dispatches his, one of the villains dispatches his victims with weather balloons, um, which is like, all right, yeah, that's a tough psychology. You know, his, his mother abused him with weather balloons or something. I don't know. But on the other hand, there's psychology and then there's the DC universe, which has to be, that's the whole point, it's, it's better than our universe, it's, it's, it's popular, it's more fun, um, it's both dark and more bleak and also more exciting and more uh, uh, attractive. Well, you question for you about the, mm. the setting, so are you also creating the pop culture in, that, like in terms of how the, what the characters in the world are reacting? Yeah, exactly, very much so, because, like say, Batman didn't pop out of his own head. He had a whole history in the pop culture of, of seeing that would work. Um, you know, of, 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 of gangsters who, sort of like 20 Chicago, who were public figures, um, who could walk the streets and, and project themselves. Um, that theatrical element um, is part of the Gotham world where everyone is their own star, their own show. That's very much part of our world. Um, and it's a, it's a the streets are full of people, the buildings are, you know, are lively, the nightlife is happening. Um, and people are reading the newspapers and watching TV. Um, so yeah, it's very much about the culture of that world that led to that. The mystery of Bruce Wayne's parents and what happens to them, which is different the Joker did it in one version, Joe Chill in another, is that a big mystery that you're going to be spreading, you're going to be taking a while to get to the bottom of? Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm just sort of considering with Ultimately, it's hard to know with you know, whoever gets to the bottom of, of anything. Um, 
to me it's a bit like who, who killed JFK. Yeah, you, know, mm. I was just gonna you can get to the bottom and then there's a false bottom yeah. under the bottom. Yeah. I don't have any, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Because yeah. Owner is a big conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> who really shot JFK. <laughs> but I don't think you ever find out who, yeah. I'm, it's a, it's a like kind of um, yeah, something yeah, something that, that underlying. We will not be going there every week because every week failing to find out. Who it the 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 really, they're still looking. But it's the kind of the current underneath it that, that sets everything in motion. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Oh. Now I have to go to my next thing.